Uh, let's speak to the political analyst Anka Shahin, who joins us now from the Turkish capital, Ankara. Thanks so much indeed for your time, Anka. Uh, how is it possible that the Queen's influence is so widespread, considering, of course, that she came to the throne in 1952, the World War had just ended, the British had a huge empire which was crumbling, and you would have thought that in those former colonies, actually she, as the figurehead of the UK, wouldn't be that popular, but she had a certain grace and benevolence that did project that character that she had of friendliness. She certainly did. And um, as head of state of um, 15 different countries uh, spreading all the way from Europe to the Caribbean to the Pacific, she did symbolize a, a sort of continuity, uh, a bedrock of uh, stability and, um, and a link, uh, I suppose, of um, between all of those countries um, to, to their common past. Yes, but surely the common past that they have is now so different. Do you think possibly that with her passing, you mentioned those 15 countries outside of the UK, it's 14 nations that still have the British monarch as their head of state, that possibly the passing of Queen Elizabeth may give the Republican movement in those countries more impetus? Indeed. And, um, and that, that's, those sorts of conversations have already started happening, um, uh, particularly in, in Australia, where I live, uh, and in New Zealand as well. And we could expect to, to hear similar conversations elsewhere. Um, while the Queen was alive, uh, of course, she was a very, very respected and loved, uh, much loved figure. And um, out of respect for her uh, long reign and her dedication uh, and her uh, role as monarch, I suppose, um, uh, there were many Republicans, uh, not just in Australia and New Zealand, but in other countries where such uh, movements have, um, have eventuated over time. Um, there was a school of thought, uh, perhaps, that, uh, that said that uh, it was uh, perhaps disrespectful to have those conversations while she was still with us. But now that she no longer is, uh, I suppose some people who, who thought along these lines might feel uh, that it's time to slowly bring back those conversations to the fore uh, with regard to transitioning to uh, becoming a republic. Yeah, it's interesting when uh, William, William now, the next in line to the throne after his father Charles, when William and his wife Kate were in Jamaica recently, the uh, Jamaican government was openly talking in front of them about becoming a republic and ditching uh, the British monarch as its head of state. Is there any reason, do you think, Anka, we should be surprised that monarchies, so many of them, still exist? The world is supposed to be a more meritocratic place than it was a few hundred years ago, so inherited status doesn't have that same kind of respect that it used to have, maybe? No, and we are seeing uh, very gradually uh, countries moving away uh, from... Um, uh, from monarchies, um, we haven't really had any new countries uh, adopting a monarchy over the last 10 to 20 years, but we have had, we have certainly had countries moving away from it, the most recent one being uh, Barbados, uh, a, a, um, a neighbour of Jamaica. So if Jamaica did follow in, in the footsteps of uh, Barbados that did transition from uh, a constitutional monarchy to a republic, uh, only a couple of years ago, that would not be a surprise. And and eventually, I suppose, those of us who um, uh, follow the politics of Australia and New Zealand closely uh, might think that uh, transitioning to a republic is, uh, is a historical eventuality. It's just a question of when, not if. Anka, really appreciate it. And also because you woke up early to be with us on TRT World. Thanks so much indeed. Anka Shahin in Ankara.